Just one of these five Power BI hacks could save you 10 hours a week, but I don't hear anybody talking about them. Let's change that today. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through five of my favorite Power BI hacks I've discovered. Not only will they make your dashboards run faster, not only will they let you build your dashboards faster, but they're gonna wow everyone around you. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mike, I'm a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've worked in finance everywhere from brand new startups all the way to the Fortune 100. And let me tell you, dashboards have been a game changer for my career and for my workload. There was a time that I took over a team that had to produce 30 individual PowerPoints, all supported by 30 individual Excel files. My team was the last one out of the office every single month end. By leveraging a dashboard, we turned those 30 reports down to a single platform, eliminated all of the Excel files, eliminated all of the decks, and we were able to give all of our business partners even more information. Once the dashboard was out, my team became the first ones out of the office every single month. And I wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to do the same thing. Now, who is this video for? This is an intermediate Power BI video. It's not gonna be advanced, we're not gonna be doing anything really crazy, but you do need to understand Power BI. If you haven't learned Power BI yet, go ahead and check out this video. This is my beginner's guide where I'm gonna teach you how to use the basics of Power BI in about 15 minutes. Make sure to stick around to the end because hack number five is an absolute game changer for your dashboards. And if you really can't wait to start saving time, go ahead and click the link down in the description. I'm gonna give you a free copy of my book, The Guide to AI Prompting for Finance. I usually charge $35, and because you're watching this video, I'm gonna give it to you totally free. You don't wanna miss this. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. Here are five Power BI hacks that will blow your mind. Hack number one, mastering the unpivot feature. You can take quick, messy, wide data sets into a clean, long format, or you can do the reverse of that and take long data sets and move them into one or two data columns, depending on how you want to work with them. This is perfect for creating pivot-friendly data. It's also perfect if you need to have multiple value columns for a way you want to build a visual in Power BI. You can use the Power BI editor as it's built right into Power BI to unpivot columns or pivot them with just a few clicks. Leveraging bookmarks for storytelling. This lets you highlight key insights by saving specific report states, so filtering to a store location, filtering to time periods. You can create interactive navigation with buttons linking to the bookmark, so you can set up a story that you want your business partners to be able to follow. You can assign it to a button, and it will always take them to those filters. This will let you compare scenarios, drill down, guide users on a path with top sheets, anything like that. And you can, again, impress your audience with really seamless story-driven presentations, even if you're not in the room to give them. So here's how you pivot or unpivot data. So we're gonna go to Power Query, which is right up here in the query section. We're gonna go ahead and transform data, and we're gonna to go to one of our existing data sets. So in this case, we're gonna be going to the data set GL data. So you'll see here our data set, we've got our dates, categories, our forecast amount, and an actual amount. Now, sometimes this is a better format if you're working in Excel, Often it's a better format if you're presenting or it might be a way that it, you know you were given the data pivoted, but it's a little bit harder to work with a data set when you have columns like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these data sets and we're gonna unpivot them and put them back into the data. So with that, we're gonna go to transform here. There's this button here, unpivot columns. There's a couple of options. You can unpivot columns, unpivot different columns, unpivot only the selected columns. If you just click, it's gonna unpivot what you've highlighted. And then there's also a button over here to pivot back, which we'll do in a second. So let's go ahead and hit unpivot columns. And look at that. So our forecast and actual amounts that were up here before have gone into this field attribute. Attribute will typically be the default name when you unpivot. And you can say forecasted or actual. So we could change this to something like version, and that will tell us that this is where our forecast and actual months are. Always really important to make sure that we're keeping organized as we go. Then if you want to unpivot this, well, there's two options. So because I pivoted it, I can come over here and just delete my step. So right there, I can just delete my step if I want to, but just to show you how this works, if I wanted to pivot this back, I could also hit pivot column in case I wanted two value columns side by side. When I pivot, I need to designate what the value column is so it knows how to do the math. So I'll select values or in value. 
All right, and now we're back to the forecast amount here and the actual amount here, and the version has been deleted. And again, you can always just delete your steps and go back to the original data table. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post brand new videos every single Monday and I don't want you to miss a thing. DAX variables are a game changer for your coding. You can simplify your DAX formulas with easy to understand variables. So instead of having to repeat something over and over again with a lot of math and making your formulas complex, you can define the variable once and then keep working with it, which is gonna save you so much time and make it easier to check your formulas. You can store intermediate results. This improves readability and it improves Power BI performance. So let me show you an example of when you could easily use a variable. So let's say that we wanted to create a calculation for our year over year growth percentage. So we've got our measure up here. Let's go ahead and drop this down so you can see the formulas we're working with. So first of all, let me show you how you would do this without using a variable. We'll paste this in. So we've got our sales year over year growth percent. We're gonna use the divide function. We're gonna do it as sales minus, then we have to calculate that the sales are in the parallel period and do the date for the parallel period. Then again, to do the division, we have to do it again and we have to again define what our parallel period and our minus 12 is. So we're using that same math twice. Sure, it works, definitely no issues with the math here. It's gonna give you your year over year growth, but it's a little bit clunky. Now here's how we would do it with a variable. All right, so you can see these side by side right here. So our sales year over year growth percent equals var. So we're gonna do var for variable, that's gonna define a variable. So nothing in this is the actual math yet. I'm gonna say my variable is gonna be called sales prior year. I'm gonna do the calculate function once. So this is what you see as repeating up here twice. So I'm gonna do this function once down here. Then I'm gonna use return. So when you're using variable, variable is the first part. Return is the second part and it's gonna return the variable. So we're just gonna do divide. We've got sales minus sales prior year and then sales prior year for the division. So where we're doing this formula where we're putting it in twice up here, here we're saying it once. It's very clear what sales prior year is. And now our formula, which this was our prior divide formula, now this is our new divide formula, and it's all pretty much just using plain text. Now, how much easier is that to read? And oh, by the way, if you needed to do multiple levels of the formula, you're able to do this. You can also just come back and copy your variables. I often like to save variables I'm using for a file so I can just come back and keep copying and paste them in. It's just a much easier way to work instead of having these kind of long clunky formulas. Don't just have to use the visuals in Power BI. There's a way to import visuals that were either built by Microsoft or built by other companies or users who developed visuals and has set them up to work directly with Power BI. There are so many cool things in here. You can go beyond basic charts with unique and impactful visualizations. You can import custom visuals. You can create your own for tailored reporting if you want to. You can make your financial KPIs stand out and easier to interpret with a lot of cool visuals like infographics. And you can enhance storytelling and engagement with your audience. So if you come to this three little dots here under visuals, you can click get more visuals. This is gonna open up a just a world of possibilities. So here are all of the different visuals that you can get. You see some of these are from other companies. We've got Zoom Charge, Zebra BI, and some of them are from Microsoft. So here's Text Filter from Microsoft. Here's a Chiclet Slicer from Microsoft, Word Cloud. So some of those are just built straight by Microsoft. Now what we want to look for is one called Infographic Designer. So here's Infographic Designer. We're gonna load that in and then we'll be able to build some cool infographics. So you see this allows you to build cool infographics with little images, make your reports look a little bit neater. So now you see anything that you've added is gonna show up under this dotted line right here. So this is gonna be where your custom visuals are and you can click this button right here to pull in a chart in your new format. So now let's recreate this chart that we have down below for sales by hour. So we're gonna go ahead and pop in sales. That's gonna be our measure. And then we'll do this by hour. So here's our sales by hour. So far, it looks a lot like the chart down here, but we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click edit mark, and this is where we can get fancy. Now this is for a coffee shop, right? So to edit this, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click the little pencil, and this is open up the mark designer. And the mark is gonna change what we show here. Now this is for a coffee shop, right? So let's go to insert shape. Let's see if there's anything cool in food and drink. And there is a coffee cup. 
So I'm going to hit OK there. We're going to get Shape 2 up here, and now all of our graphs are individual little coffee cups. I can also come over to the gear here and change settings. I can change the color if I want to. So I'll go to Custom. I can come down here. Let's just make this like green. Hit OK. There you go. So you can just do all these little changes here. Or I can follow the theme of the overall presentation. And then for the chart, you have all the usual options over here in Visual and General. You can do whatever you need to do there. And that's how you can pull in any kind of custom visuals. And as you saw when we were loading Infographic Designer, there's just a ton of options, both free and paid, that you can bring in. Or if you're feeling really fancy, you can just design your own. Now let's talk about how to add bookmarks so you can direct people to your filters. Now on the View tab, a couple of neat things here. So we've got filters. Probably worked with that before. So here's where we can pop out our filters panel. Bookmarks is right here. You can also pull in Performance Analyzer, a cool way if you're having you know, some slow workbooks. You can speed it up and you can sync all of your slicers together across pages. But for now, we're going to pull in bookmarks. It's going to come over here right on the right. Now, all you need to do is set this to the filter you want. So let's say it is June and you want to send a report that's going to be for the Hell's Kitchen location. We can go and hit Add. We're going to rename this bookmark, and all it's going to do is take whatever filters or slicers you have applied at that moment, and it's going to save those. So we're going to call this one House Kitchen June. Now, let's say we want to do one. Let's just for fun go to March, and then we'll call this Lower Manhattan. Where we'll hit Add. So this is going to go to March for Lower Manhattan, and we will call it Lower Manhattan and March. All right, so now if I go back to Hell's Kitchen in June, you'll see everything changes. If I go to Lower Manhattan in March, everything changes. So it's a really great way to let your business partners have the ability to go faster. I'll also show you that if we go to Insert and if we hit Buttons, I can go to the Navigator and hit Bookmark Navigator, and it's going to give me buttons that are for my bookmarks. And I can format these just like my usual charts and tables and they're fully functional. So instead of having to go to the bookmarks menu, I can set up buttons, I can format these. So clicking this will take me right to Hell's Kitchen in June, and clicking this will take me to Lower Manhattan in March. So if you've got three store owners and you want them all to be able to look at the current month, you can give each, th each store owner a button, let them click right here, and it will take them right to their view. How cool is that? If you're enjoying this video, make sure to join my weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. Every single Thursday, I'm going to send you automation hacks, tips, tricks, and more ways to save time and look good at work. Now, hack number five is the absolute game changer. You can use AI tools like Claude, ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot to write your DAX formulas for you. This eliminates the need to do tedious manual DAX writing and keep troubleshooting your formulas. They're faster, they're more accurate. You can spend less time on formula building and more time on analyzing the data. We're really letting the machines do the heavy lifting so that you can focus on actionable insights, which is ultimately the point of the dashboard. But what you'll notice is we've got food sales in here and we've got coffee sales and we've got ingredient cost, but what we're actually missing is our cost of sales and we're missing our gross profit. So we wanna add in measures that can do that. So we're gonna to wanna to add our measure to GL data. We'll go ahead and select that. Now let's go to ChatGPT. So we're going to paste in. It's always good to start with a new chat if you're completely changing what you're doing. We've got our prompt here from our Spark framework. Act as a financial analyst and coding expert. I need your help writing DAX for Power BI. I have a table called GL data, which I need to add a measure to. For this measure, I want to call it gross profit. This measure needs to sum any revenue in the actual amount column if the category is food sales or beverage sales. Then subtract out any revenue in the actual amount column if the category is ingredient cost. Give me the DAX code ready to copy and paste into Power BI. Ask me any questions you need to provide the best response. We'll hit send and see what happens. All right, it's jumping straight into the formula. So gross profit is going to use the calculate formula. We're going to sum X from table GL data. Category is either food, beverage, food sales or beverage sales. GL data is the actual amount. Then the category ingredient cost minus GL data. So we're basically creating a variable here and then referencing the variable here to do the math. This looks good to me. We'll go ahead, create a new measure. We'll paste that in. Hit save. 
right? And there's our gross profit measure. Let's just make sure this worked. We're going to pull in our months across the top. That'll be our columns. Actual amount will be our values. And then let's pull in our categories and also pull in our new gross profit. So look at that. In just seconds, we were able to write this. We we're able to add gross profit. So now we can pull gross profit in. And you can also do this for operating income, whatever you need to do. And it was able to write that for us in just seconds. Now, if you're experienced with Power BI, you might get a lot faster at writing this. But starting out, it's great to have this. It's also really great to have the ability to tell you how it works, how you can use it, any quick questions to double check, and just to make sure that it's all working. And if we did have any issues, you could come back and troubleshoot. If you enjoyed this video, then you need to check out my deep dive on AI coding. It's going to go a a lot more in depth into hack number five, and it's going to show you how to do other coding languages like VBA, like Python, and more. You don't want to miss it. Click right up here. That's going to go to that video. I highly recommend it. I'll catch you over there. This is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.